So whenever you think of buying a new camera for yourself, either for the YouTube videos or any kind of professional work which you want to do, 90% of the time which camera comes into your mind is the Sony a7 III. Now why it is that popular? Let's find out. What's up everyone, hope you guys are doing absolutely fine. Welcome back to my channel once again and after changing the name of this channel, this is the very first video which I am posting. So I am very happy about it and look at this setup. This is looking so, so, so much beautiful. I didn't really expect this to uh, look this much beautiful but it's, I'm feeling so satisfied. Let's talk about the camera which is Sony a7 III. I bought this camera one and a half years ago and since that time I've been using this for the lot many different things that for vlogging, music videos, product videography and the real estate videos and much more. The reason it's been the so popular camera in this whole world right after its launch, especially in this YouTube community, is because it offers lot many features and lot many things which are really required in any camera to make a video just like 120 frames per second in 1080 that is full HD which is everyone's dream to shoot the buttery smooth B-rolls with 120 frames per second and then 4K at 24 frames per second without any crop. Unlike Canon which has 1.7 time crops, it has zero crop at 24 frames per second. But just in case you are from some another world and you wanna shoot 30 frames per second, it would give you a 1.2 times crops. But I think those people do not really exist on this world. Or do they? And along with that, this camera is capable of shooting in so many log profiles just like S-Log, HLG and much more. And the next thing is this has been the top most mirrorless camera brand which has lot many lenses in the market. Either they are native Sony lenses or the third party lenses by Sigma or Tamron or Samyang. So there are a ton of lenses for the Sony E-mount which you can adapt on this camera body so which is really really convenient. And the next and most important thing is its small form factor. So due to these couple of points, this camera has been and still been so much popular among the youtubers now nothing used to be perfect in this world so this is why i'm gonna tell you the cons of this camera along with the pros of course we're gonna dig deep into that that should you buy this camera or not or who this camera is for the very first point is like not so good ergonomics yes if you're gonna shoot handheld with this for the longer time or you're into photography, your hands are gonna get tired because your pinky finger do not rest on this grip. So after using it for long hours, your hands start feeling a little bit of pain and you miss that extra grip. But if you see on the other side, the bodies like Canon EOS R or the Nikon Z series has a really good grip as compared to this camera, which is a little bit of a bummer if you wanna shoot it handheld. So to compensate with that, you can buy some aftermarket grips. And now the second biggest con of this camera is its LCD screen. Now there are two points in that. It is a touchscreen display, but it is not entirely touchscreen. Like you cannot use the menu, you cannot go through the playback by using those touch controls. Only thing which you can do is like choosing your focus point. Yeah, that's the only thing you can do by using the touch functions. Otherwise, it doesn't really work at all. You have to use the buttons like you used to do in the 1990s. So yeah, th that's it. And the second point which I wanted to say that this LCD screen is so terrible that it doesn't give you accurate colors, doesn't even have the good resolution. Even the camera like Canon 80D, which I've been using at the office has much more better LCD screen as this camera. So that is a big bummer. Although if you been using the Sony for the longer period of time you will get used to it but so yeah some people might be disagree with that because I've, I've talked to some of the people and they say no we it's just fine so probably they get used to it of course I also got used to it but it's not so good you need to you need to understand it. and the next point is also major point which is that not so good straight out of camera colors Yes, if you're gonna throw it at the standard profiles, it's not gonna give you the bestest colors in this world. It will always give you some kind of shift in the colors, like blue will look a little bit of cyan and then your skin will look a little bit reddish. So right now I'm not shooting in log profile or something, which I have set up my picture profile one. So which gives me the colors just like it used to come out of Canon. So that makes it a little bit easier to work with. So all the professional work and my vlogs, I use it in HLG, that is hyper log gamma. So that gives me plenty of dynamic range. And also I can play 
play around with the colors but if you are into wedding or you are in some kind of work that you need to get the straight out of camera colors you don't want to spend any of the time on your footage so that might be a little bit of bummer although you can play it around you know by setting it the picture profile just like I did and the next point which is also major that it gives you very less bit rates as compared to the other cameras in the market for example if you're shooting full HD in 24 frame per second it gives you only 50 mbps while I think the Canon EOS R offers somewhat around 200 Mbps in Full HD and in 4K that's around 400 Mbps I think but in Sony even if you're shooting 4K you're gonna get only 100 Mbps so which is really really less at least as compared to the EOS R now you might be thinking that probably I'm just comparing it with the other camera this is why I'm feeling like this is less but if you color grade it you go a little bit further then you start seeing a little bit of blotch just like a noise and you can't really fix it and it happens because of the lower bit rate and also uh, it has the 8 bit video footage so this is why you can't really play much around with it in the EOS R it has the option that you can put an extra Turner recorder and you can record 10 bit video in that but in the Sony there is no option like that even if you plug in the external recorder I think the 8 bit footage will come out in ProRes but it doesn't give you any 10 bit footage and it gives you lower bit rate so that's also kind of a bummer so the next point which I'm gonna talk about is probably I don't know if it is with me only or in this particular unit that whenever I'm gonna use go through the menu or I'm changing the different modes like uh, shifting from manual to video mode sometimes it takes a couple of seconds to switch you know and if you're using a picture profile it will do some weird things and uh, it won't just switch very fast and if you're gonna go and format the memory card it's gonna take much longer as I've seen on the DSLRs so I don't know why is that or probably it's with this particular unit only I'm not really sure about that but this happens so it doesn't really give me the much more fluidic experience while going through menus and the different modes all right so you might be thinking that there are so many cons and why still people go and buy this camera because there are a ton of pros about this camera which makes it much more worth buying than the most of the cameras in the market and now let's talk about all the ton of features and the things which this camera comes with and make people want to buy it okay the biggest positive of this camera is that it's amazing picture quality and the high dynamic range yes the bit rate of this camera is pretty less but still it produces very good images which look amazing on the screen and if you color grade it well you can make it a cinematic look very easily and if you talk about dynamic range it retains much more detail in shadows as well as in highlights as compared to the Canon and even if you want to play it around with in the Premiere Pro in the post-production still this footage holds and pretty good strength that you can play with highlights and the shadow sliders without ruining your footage and the next thing which I really liked about this camera is the shortcut keys I think you can turn any key into a shortcut key for any kind of the thing which you want to use it for. So there are a couple of keys which they have given which are specifically for the shortcut keys like C1, C2, C3, C4 and along with that you can use all other keys to set up for a shortcut function also. So all those shortcut keys makes it so easier that you don't really have to go into the menu for all those different settings and all. So I have set up almost all the commonly used menus which I really go through on the shortcut keys just like uh, the picture profile and the ISO and the white balance in the focus point and super 35 modes. I, I have set up all those things on the shortcut keys which makes it really easy to work with. It makes it a little bit faster than the, all other cameras. So these shortcut keys makes your life hell a lot of easier than any other thing so the next thing which i loved is it's super 35 mode it's a full frame camera but if you're being a little bit short on the focal length or you're using a prime lens and you want to zoom in that you can hit the super 35 mode both in photos and videos and you can punch in 1.5 times than the actual focal length of your lens that that makes it so easier so while i'm filming on some events and uh, i just can't really get closer so i just hit the super 35 button and boom and we have the 1.5 time crop and which has made my life so easier and the super 35 mode is very much amazing that i use it so often and i don't think so it's available in any other camera those cameras switch into super 35 mode only if you throw a crop sensor uh, lens on that but I, I don't know if they have this particular button or the menu that you can switch to super 35 mode even with the full frame lenses and the third thing is its price it comes around 2000 us dollars of price uh, i know it's a little bit on the expensive side but as compared to the other cameras it's 
still a budget full frame camera which is really easy on your pocket although when you go out to buy some lenses those lenses are extremely expensive even than the body itself if you're going to talk about 24 to 70 g master or the 70 to 200 g master i think all of those lenses are expensive even more than the body itself but the best thing is that there are a ton of lenses by the tamron sigma and samyang which you can go and buy and then the next thing which i really love about this camera and i bought it for is the 120 frames per second now the why 120 frames matter to me a lot because i wanted to use it for two reasons the one to shoot the b-rolls in the vlogs and to shoot the music videos and if you look at the music videos all those slow motion shots they look so good so this is why the 120 frames were a highly necessary thing so which i wanted in the camera so this is why i left out the canon eos r otherwise probably i would have got that but 120 frames is one of the biggest thing if you go and shoot the b-rolls with 120 frames per second even handheld they look so good you don't even need a gimbal for small movements it takes you the whole new different world which was created initially by peter mckinnon and matty hapoya they have set an industry standard for the youtube world with these buttery smooth b-rolls which they used to put in these videos and the next thing i decided to go for this camera is because of the lock capabilities so if you're gonna shoot s log 2 or s log 3 on this camera you're gonna get the maximum dynamic range out of this body so which is really 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 good if you want to expose the shadows and the highlights correctly and along with that you also get the hyper log gamma and the cine 4 log profiles which give you the different kind of looks which you're gonna go for i use it hlg because that's much more easy to work with and it give me decent dynamic range and also decent room to play with for the color correction or the color grading and the s log profile really comes in handy when you need to balance out the highlights and the shadows in high contrast situation and then the next thing is autofocus i know people say that dual pixel autofocus by canon is the one of the best autofocus in the market i agree with that but the autofocus of sony has been also very much reliable for me it's fast it's accurate although it's uh, even more faster than it needs to be <laughs> but you can change all those settings in the camera so that gives us much more flexibility to play around with autofocus only and as you know this camera doesn't have flip out lcd screen and i've been using this for the vlogs from so long but it never failed me once i always knew that i am in focus with the face priority mode it this works absolutely fine so after canon the sony has been really good at autofocus at least in this current generation and the next thing is is charging it sports the charging via usb i think this was the first brand to introduce it and it's been really great feature for me that you won't believe me i have only single battery and i just keep the power bank with me and whenever i need to charge it on the go i can plug in the power bank and it's just keep on rolling and getting the juice from the power bank and i didn't really feel the need of the second battery although i do really need it but i just work it like that so charging from usb is so good thing which they have introduced and which was really really necessary and of course the next thing if you are really fan of shooting at 4k just like right now i'm shooting at 4k whenever i'm in a situation then i don't have to put the slow motion shots i used to film in the 4k the reason being because it gives me much more bitrate than the full hd and uh, when you watch it on the screen as compared to the 1080 it, it used to have a lot more details and the sharpness in the video this is why i love to shoot in 4k and the 4k shoot used to be at full frame sensor it do not give me any kind of crop so that is the best thing which i love about it so if you're much more into shooting the 4k videos then this is a really great option because you can use the same full frame lenses even in full hd and in the 4k because if you're going to shift into the canon and you want to shoot 4k then you have to go for the crop sensor lenses which will give you the equivalent view of the full frame so that's a big bummer i think this is the longer video i ever filmed so this this these were so this was my experience with this camera and all this time while using it for vlogs and the professional work. For the professional work, I've been happy except one thing that it has 8-bit footage. I wish there could be at least 10 bits so which would have given me much more room for the color grading. For the vlogging, it's not the bestest camera but still you can vlog on it just like I've been doing as a lot many other people in this world are doing. So I would say that if you can live without 120 frames per second, go and buy EOS R. Now why is that? Because it has a really good state out of camera colors which makes it easier for you to edit and post the vlogs as soon as possible so you won't really have to struggle with correcting your skin tones in the post production so which takes a lot of time so this is it about today's video if you like this don't forget to hit the like button and give your comments down below and in the future there will be many more videos coming about cameras lenses all these videography techniques which i've been using into my vlogs and my professional work so if you want to watch those videos make sure you hit the subscribe button if you are new to my channel and if you're my old loving viewers don't forget to hit the like button and just tell me that how did you like this look 
in this new channel's name which we have come to i just feel like this is a new journey which we have been on so this is it about today's video hit the like button if you like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel and don't forget to follow me on instagram for the real-time update so see ya in the next video